Hello and welcome to the Microwave Engineering lecture titled Introduction to SMIT Charts. In this lecture we will learn that a SMIT chart is a polar plot of the reflection coefficient gamma. We will also learn how to derive the normalized impedance z. We'll look at the derivation of the SMIT chart and then we'll look at some final notes. The Smith chart is based on a polar plot of the voltage reflection coefficient gamma. This is the formula for the reflection coefficient, which is equal to the magnitude of the reflection coefficient times e to the j theta, where theta is the angled measured counterclockwise from the right side of the chart. And the magnitude of gamma is the radius of the various circles of constant reflection coefficient as shown here. Notice that the outer boundary corresponds to the magnitude equals to 1. This means that the Smith chart only models passive devices. The reflection coefficient in any passive system must be less than or equal to 1. In order to use the Smith chart, we need to normalize the impedance. This is usually done with respect to the characteristic impedance on the transmission line Z0. So the normalized impedance is equal to lowercase z, which is given by the impedance z over the transmission line impedance z0. The reflection coefficient from a load can also be written in terms of normalized impedances. For the reflection coefficient, we have that it's equal to the load impedance minus the impedance of the transmission line divided by the load impedance plus the impedance of the transmission line. If we divide every term by the impedance of the transmission line, we obtain the reflection coefficient in terms of normalized load impedance. Starting from this equation, we solve for the normalized impedance ZL. We take the denominator and move it to the left side. Then we distribute gamma. Then we move all the ZL terms to the left side and the other terms to the right side. We factor ZL and finally we solve for ZL. Now the normalized load impedance and reflection coefficient can be written in terms of its real and imaginary parts, where ZL equals RL, which is the real part, plus XL, which is the imaginary part. Also for gamma, we have that it's equal to gamma R for the real part and gamma I for the imaginary part. We substitute these expressions into the normalized load impedance equation and we obtain this expression. We solve the previous equation for RL, which is the real part, and XL, which is the imaginary part, by setting the real and imaginary parts equal. We multiply by the conjugate, we carry all the multiplication and the factoring here, we get rid of the parentheses by multiplying everything here, and we group all the terms into its real and imaginary components. Here is a formula with the real part and the imaginary part. which means that RL is equal to this expression and XL is equal to this expression. Now for RL, we will rearrange the equation so that it has the form of a circle. Starting from this equation, we move RL to the denominator 
then the, num the denominator to the left side, like this. Then we move all of the terms to the left side, we distribute RL in every term. We get rid of the square term here by multiplying everything and putting all the terms. Then we get rid of the denominators by multiplying every term times our L. We group some common terms with gamma R squared and gamma I squared. And finally, we divide every term by RL plus 1. Notice that these terms can be factored. After factoring, we obtain this expression. Then we move the terms with gammas on the left side and the other terms to the right side. In order for the right terms to have the same denominator, we multiply the right term by RL plus 1 over RL plus 1. In this step, we just multiply these terms and obtain this. And finally, we carry on the subtraction here to obtain this term. Now notice that this expression has now the form of a circle. The same thing will be done to XL so that the expression has a form of a circle. We start with this equation. Then we exchange XL to be on the denominator and this term to be on the left side. Then we move the right term to the left side and then we notice that in this expression we can swap terms and these two terms can be factored. After doing that, we obtain the expression that has the form of a circle. Now with these two expressions, we notice that we have two families of circles. The first family is the constant resistance circles given by the real part. The circles have centers at these locations. Gamma R equals RL over RL plus 1 and Gamma I equals 0. And the radius is given by this, 1 over 1 plus RL. And the circles look like this. For the second family of circles, we have the constant reactance circles from the imaginary part. The circles have centers at gamma R equals 1, gamma I equals 1 over XL, and each circle has a radius of 1 over XL. And the circles look like this. Now when we put all together the lines of constant resistance plus the lines of constant inductive reactance on the upper half and the lines of constant capacitive reactance on the bottom half plus the lines of constant reflection coefficient, we obtain by superposition the entirety of this mid-chart. Remember that we're modeling passive systems, so we ignore what's outside the gamma equals one circle. We do not draw the constant gamma circles, we just know that they are there. This is the Smith chart. Another way of visualizing the Smith chart is knowing that it is a bilinear transformation of the complex impedance plane, in which the horizontal axis corresponds to the real part of the impedance and the vertical axis corresponds to the imaginary part. The bilinear transformation folds the plane unto itself so that now lines become circles, 
transforming into what we call the Smith chart. Also as a summary, we derive the circles of constant resistance. We also derive the circles of constant reactance. By combining them together via superposition, we obtain the full Smith chart with reactance regions in which the upper half corresponds to the inductive region and the bottom half corresponds to the capacitive region. There is another way of visualizing things with a 3D Smith chart. In this Smith chart, you no longer walk across a flat circle, but you walk along the surface of the Smith chart. This Smith chart unifies passive and active circuit design. 